Good morning, church family. Good morning and welcome to the worship of God on this day when we are gathered in God's love and God's grace, God's mercy, in the promises of baptism. Uh, we are gathered in those promises where we have the promise of everlasting life, and uh, we celebrate that this day. Uh, we want to welcome those that are joined online with us this morning on Zoom or on Facebook. We're glad you're here, and we hope uh, this time of worship is uplifting for you, and you'll come back and join us again and again. Uh, we call ourselves Grace at the Cross here, which is a combined ministry of Amazing Grace Lutheran Church right here in Waxhaw, North Carolina, and Crossroads Lutheran Church over in Indian Land, South Carolina. There's only about eight miles between the two churches, but a lot of ministry happens in between uh, in that time when we gather together to do God's work in our communities and gather together in fellowship and in worship. Thanks for taking time to worship with us this morning. A couple of notes about worship today. We will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, and all are welcome to the table. Even those of you that are online, we invite you to join us in the sacrament of communion. So take a moment and gather the elements you need, some bread and wine or crackers, grape juice, whatever you have there. Gather those elements so you can be ready for the sacrament later on in worship. Also, another note about worship, at the time of the offering, uh, you're welcome to come forward uh, when I share that time is ready, and then you can make your offering on either side of the sanctuary. Um, we're not having a traditional children's time with noisy offering today, so children, when, when the offering time is, is here, you guys can come up too, um, and you guys can share your noisy offering. The noisy offering bucket's right here in the corner. You're welcome to throw your noisy change in there at that time. We also, I wanted to share a couple of announcements about life and ministry that's coming up this week at Amazing Grace. Uh, as we will not have a, a time of moment for mission, we'll be going downstairs for fellowship. Uh, this coming Tuesday, the 22nd, we have our next mobile food pantry. Uh, and I invite those, to, uh, those of you that are able to come out and help uh, volunteer your time. Uh, we'll start set up around 1 o'clock. As soon as the truck arrives, and as soon as we're set up, we're ready to start rolling. Uh, usually that's, that's around 2 o'clock, uh, maybe a few minutes after. If you're able to come for a little bit of time or for the whole time, we could really uh, use extra hands. The last two times we've had this mobile food pantry, there's been such a need uh, that we've run out of food. <laughs> so we're praying for this time that we have a great supply of volunteers and a great supply of food and resources to be able to feed a uh, hungry community uh, this week. So that's this Tuesday, the 22nd at 1 o'clock. Is that right, Barbara? We got, I got all those details right. I'm also excited to announce that we have a start date for our new kids ministry, Kids Connect. Uh, Carly McGee's been working really hard along with Janine uh, to, to get this thing going and get this thing planned. Uh, so parents, mark your calendars for March 13th. That'll be our kickoff date for Kids Connect, March 13th. From 3.30 to 5.30. Every time we'll meet, it'll be 3.30 to 5.30. Programs will, uh, pro the program will be from 3.30 to 5. And then uh, we're, we'll have a meal from 5 to 5.30. Our goal is to uh, have your children to have a great experience uh, learning the Bible stories and getting uh, fired up for the Lord. And then filling their tummies so that they can go home and get into that nighttime school night routine of whatever that looks like, bath and, and bed and homework or whatever needs to be done before bedtime. Um, so March 13th, 330 to 530. Our confirmation class will meet today in person at 430 at Crossroads. So confirmation students, please keep that in mind today at 430 at Crossroads. I mentioned that we will have a fellowship after worship. Uh, today is a, a special Sunday uh, in which we get to celebrate the life of one of our own, Mary Ann Rockow. We're delighted to have Mary Ann's family here uh, with us. Um, 
We, you all have been in our prayers. I know this has not been an easy time, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's not been an easy time for any of us, right? Because uh, as someone told me um, on Bible study right after Mary Ann died, she was just here last week. <laughs> you know, she was just at Bible study last time we gathered, and um, that's the way we've all felt, right? It's been such a shock. Um, so you all have been in our prayers. We're thankful that you're here so that we can celebrate her life together. Uh, and the fellowship time after worship downstairs will be an opportunity um, to tell stories and uh, love on this family a little bit and love on each other as we're all grieving uh, the loss of someone special um, this, at, at this time. So part of worship today will also be a memorial service uh, to celebrate Marianne's life. Um, you'll hear uh, a time to uh, remembrance to celebrate Marianne's life, and uh, we pray uh, that she has been received into God's mercy and God's glory, and she is now with Jesus. In fact, through the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, we know that to be true, and so we celebrate that good news today. I want to give us an opportunity to share the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to our neighbor and give a wave and share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. God's peace be with you this morning. God's peace is yours, those that are worshiping online. We uh, hope you'll take a moment and share that message of peace with one another using the chat feature or the comment feature. Uh, share a message of God's peace. And then like and, and share this Facebook uh, worship opportunity so that others in your friend's feed can join us in worship today as well. Thanks for taking a moment to do that. We begin worship today with a thanksgiving for baptism. Please stand and turn to face the font. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we praise you, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Good morning. The first reading comes from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm going to take this off. So you're going to have to suffer looking at my face. My name is Brian Jones. Many of you know me. Those that don't will call you the lucky ones. Um, so I married Marianne's youngest daughter. So if you're keeping score in the pew, that makes Marianne my mother in law. Um, But in addition to being my mother-in-law, Marianne was a member of my family because she lived with us for full-time for 10 years and and part-time for two years before that. So um, 
she was very much a member of the Jones family. When I would tell people that my mother-in-law lived with me, and by people I mean other men, uh, they, would, they would look at me and say, how do you do this? But it really wasn't that hard because um, Marianne was pretty easy to live with. She, uh, she never got you know, involved in, in, in anything that, uh, that was going on between Ellen and I. Uh, she, never, she, she never stuck her nose, quote unquote, into our business. Um, she was really just supportive. And, um, you know, what a joy to have her with us for all those years. Um, it really was pretty easy living with my mother-in-law. <clears throat> when the way she came to live with us was when her husband passed away in, in 2008, she would come and spend a few uh, months with us each winter to, uh, to spend time uh, with, with Ellen and I, but let's be honest, to spend time with her youngest granddaughter, Tegan. And um, so she did that for about two years, and then, and, then, and then she decided that the house that, that she shared with her husband on this lake was just too much for her to keep, take care of, and she was thinking, well, where am I gonna go live? And we thought, it's silly for you to go you know, live anywhere else, uh, pay rent or, or something like, why don't you just come move in with us and watch your granddaughter grow up? And her response to us was, I'm going where the action is. <laughs> and the action was definitely Tegan. So, she, so she, uh, she got to come and watch Tegan grow up. What an amazing uh, gift that was for her, but also for Tegan. Because she got to watch all these things that Tegan got to do as, as she was younger. So she got to go to spelling bees. And she got to uh, you know, watch Tegan at dance recitals and gymnastics and, and uh, you know, Girl Scouts and all that stuff that the little girls do. And then as Tegan uh, got older and, and took up ho competitive horseback riding, she got to watch Tegan learn how to ride a horse and then got to watch Tegan get really, really good at it and win a bunch of stuff. Uh, how cool was that? She got to watch Tegan learn how to ride a bike and then later drive a car. Uh, really was a, a blessing and, and when when, she, when Tegan was, was younger, uh, and Ellen and I would go out on date nights, um, Tegan and Grandma would have nights together. And uh, um, those nights, to the best of my knowledge, what I've been told, consisted of um, Marianne making Tegan these sandwiches called Slim Jims that she loved, and eating ice cream. And I've come to find out that actually there was probably more ice cream shared than we knew of. <laughs> I've been told that sometimes, some nights the, the meal was exclusively ice cream. Uh, but then they also shared secrets. <laughs> How cool was that? So, uh, but anyhow, uh, it, was, it was really a, a blessing for, for Tegan to be able to grow up with her, with her grandmother in the house. And, and, and I've shared with other people that if you're raising little ones, uh, do your best to, to expose them as much as you can to their grandparents because there is an advantage for them hearing for the, from the other generation. When the words come out of the parent's mouth, it sounds like the same old stuff. When it comes out of their grandparents' mouth, it sounds like sage wisdom. So uh, it definitely paid off dividends for us. Uh, I was thinking as, as, you know, when, when Marianne passed away, we got the we got the girls together on a, on a Zoom call like you do these days, and uh, the very first thing that the girls said was they wanted to, to be together as soon as possible. And I think that's, I think that's really a testament to, to, to Marianne because family was important to her, and you can see that family is important to her because they're all here today. Um, so we got the family together as quickly as we possibly could in one huge house in Ohio, and uh, so we were all together, and what I will tell you is there was an enormous amount of healing that took place in that house uh, because everybody was, was able to be together and, and share stories and process something that was not expected to have happened. Um, and as I was sitting there uh, watching everybody in this, in this house, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, how, how, would, how would we measure Marianne as a, as a mother? I made a joke at her, at her memorial service that, that hopefully it's not by height because 
That would not have been good for her. But uh, I, was, I was looking around the room and I was thinking to myself, if, if, you know, if I was in a corporate setting and I was doing a, 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 an exit interview on Marianne, how would I measure what she accomplished? And the room just, the room just spoke to me about, about what the, the accomplishments were of Marianne. So the first thing I saw was four very beautiful, very, very accomplished, moral, ethical, good daughters. One I'm especially partial to, but 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 the, but the other ones, uh, just just really really good people. And then you look out and you see four amazing grandkids. Uh, one that went into teaching just like her grandma, teaching elementary school kids. One's a chemical engineer. Another one's an aerospace engineer, sending rockets into space. And then there's Tegan who I'm getting very partial to, but, but uh, if you haven't met her, she hates when I do this, but she's a better person than I'll ever be. So, Mary Ann is in all of that. And then, and then I look out again and I see four great-grandkids that have the spirit of their, grand, of their great-grandmother in them. They don't even know it yet. So, when you measure, when you measure uh, the accomplishments of a mom, you have to look no further than, than all the offspring and, and the, and the great-grandkids and the grandkids. What an amazing uh, testament to Marianne. As you all know, she, she was a teacher. That's what she loved to do. She was especially partial, partial to teaching little kids. Uh, that's why this, you know, the, the, the gospel verse today, Mark 10, was, is, is spot on, um, because she loved teaching little kids. And, and when we came here to, to North Carolina, as you know, uh, you know, we came to Amazing Grace, and, and Mary Ann came with us, and she got, got very much into uh, helping out with Sunday school and VBS. She, she was helping out with, with VBS at, at, uh, at the church we attended this past summer. That was something that she really liked to do, little kids. Um, little kids filled her heart with joy. <clears throat> and that got me also thinking about joy. It's been said that... The way you spell joy is Jesus, others, you. And Mary Ann embraced that. Uh, I've been telling people that Mary Ann had 82 really good years because I never heard the woman complain. And she had a few things to complain about. She was 82. She had a, Every day didn't feel great, right? Uh, I'm 50, every day doesn't feel great. But, but, but she never complained. <laughs> She, she lost her husband before she was supposed to, never complained. She gave up her entire life to come and be with her granddaughter, never complained. Um, I think that's, I think, I think we should all look at that and, and take a little bit of, of, of uh, guidance from that, that that's, that might be how you find joy in your life. Focus on Jesus, on others, and then you. And she definitely did that. She, as you know, she she um, she volunteered in a lot of different things around here with the with the mobile pantry and the and the blessing box and and Sunday school and and <clears throat> she volunteered a lot around our house too. Uh, she 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 pitched in and did and did a lot of chores around our house that we never asked her to do. She she helped my wife prepare a meal every single night, and I've been telling people that one of the things that I will miss and simultaneously not miss is, is my wife and Ellen making a salad together. Marianne was with us for 12 years and still asked the same questions over and over again about how to make this salad. And there, was, <laughs> there were some nights when I would look over and I, and I would think to myself, I, maybe I need to go grab the knife out of my wife's hand. But um, <clears throat> that wasn't Marianne being annoying. That was Marianne not wanting to in her mind, overstep her bounds or, or, or force herself on, on the situation, despite the fact that she was as much a Jones as anybody else. She, she was a member of our family, but still, she didn't want to overstep her bounds in making, in making the salad. So, um, when, I, when I think about joy, and I think about the recipe for joy, I see Mary Ann. You know, somebody was saying to me yesterday that she was always smiling. And I think that's true. I, 
in all the years that I was with her, I, I don't remember too many sad days. Um, I don't know how she did it, but maybe I do. It's, it, it's, it's that recipe for joy. I wish, I wish I had it as, as often as she did. The other thing that, that struck me was when, when we walked into her room the morning after she passed, um, the first thing that, that hit me was, and I never noticed that this was, that there was a little plaque sitting on her, on her nightstand that's, that was Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I'm God. And then we opened up her Bible and it was the first thing we came to. And I thought, hmm, maybe there's something to this. Maybe there's something to just letting that peace come into your life, that stillness to come into your life, and knowing that there's something bigger than you. There's, there's something else in control. I think that's how you find joy. Now, I, don't wanna, I don't want to um, harbor too much on Marianne's passing, but there were two things from that, from that event that stand out to me. Number one is that she, she held on past midnight and into the next day. And after she passed, we were sitting there and very quietly trying to, to figure out what's next. And Ellen looked down at her phone and said, huh, today is my mother's 61st wedding anniversary. So she goes, she gets to go home and be with her, be with dad. How cool was that? Make it to your 61st wedding anniversary. And the other thing that struck me was as we were leaving the hospital uh, at about 2.30 in the morning, uh, we walk outside, and all of a sudden, it starts snowing. But not just snow, not like North Carolina snow. This was snow. This was big, soft, fluffy flakes, perfect snow, and it did it for four minutes, and that's it. And we were... We were standing out in the parking lot, staring up at this, at this amazing snow that was not supposed to happen. It was not in the forecast. And Tegan said, I think Grandma made it snow. <laughs> and I'll tell you, people, that, that um, the culture out there and even many, char many parts of the church today are trying to take the mystery out of this life. But I like to think that there's, that there's mystery left in life. I, don't, I can't explain why it snowed for four minutes. I can't explain why that snow was, was as amazing as it was. But then again, I think Tegan had the best explanation. So I'm going to close with, with um, something else that we found in, in Mary Ann's Bible. It was written in her hand, so I'm going to take it that it was important to her. And as I read it, I think you'll see why. Um, I, think it, I think it gives all of us some guidance. And this might have come out of one of the the um, Bible studies. So it says, Stay with me, Lord. I am weak. You are my life. You are my light. Show me your will so that I hear you. I love you. Show me to be faithful to you. You help me to renew my strength. I want to be united with you at death. I look for your love, grace, will, heart. <clears throat> Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, show love. Where there is injury, show pardon. Where there is doubt, show faith. Where there is despair, show joy. Allow me to console, understand, and love. In giving, we receive. In pardoning, we are pardoned. In dying, we are born to eternal life. Thank you. I don't know how you can begin to stand up here and preach on the gospel when Marianne's life is so much living that gospel, right? I can tell you that um, 
when we were planning this service today, um, we asked the family what were some of Marianne's favorite scripture passages, her favorite hymns, anything else that you wanted to include in on the service. Um, and so a lot, a lot of the hymns, the scripture passages today were Marianne's favorites. But what we didn't choose, what Marianne didn't have a hand in, was the prayer of the day. Oh Lord Jesus, make us an instrument of your peace. And yet, Brian just shared that was written in her Bible, that well-known prayer. Talk about a mystery of the faith and the work of the Holy Spirit. This is actually the prayer of the day that's assigned to this Sunday, um, the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. About a week after uh, Marianne died, I was frantically searching for an email. That's what happens a lot of times when I don't have good organizational skills and I share the files where they need to be shared. I have to look back at my email to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be and all that stuff. And for whatever reason, one of the key words that I typed into my search menu and my email uh, brought up an email from, from Marianne. And I didn't get a lot of emails from Marianne, so when I got one, I, I knew it was something that she wanted to share with me. And this email that came up was a picture that she sent me. And she, the, all she wrote in there was, Pastor, I thought you might enjoy this. And it was a picture of a dog. And he's got sunglasses on. And he's sitting with his legs crossed and reclined back. And he's holding up a sign. And he's smiling from ear to ear. And it sa- the sign says, I peed on the pastor at the pet blessing. <laughs> And I responded because I think it was around the time that I do the annual uh, Blessing of the Hounds for the Mecklenburg Hounds. And it is uh, without a doubt that every time I do that pet blessing that I'm going to get peed on. They tell me it's good luck, but I don't know. <laughs> Marianne had that sense of humor about her, though. You know, she, she appeared this, this quiet, calm, tranquil woman, but she had such a way about her. Uh, that was so humble, but it had, uh, she had this great sense of humor. And I love that about her. And so I got a good chuckle in that email. One of Marianne's favorite passages that we heard today is from Ephesians 2. That our merciful God saves us by grace. And this is not our own doing. This is not our own doing. But that this grace prepares us for good works. Now, we Lutherans, we we stay away from good works, right? (laughs) We stay away from that works righteousness. Because we believe that we're saved by grace through faith. The end, amen. But Mary Ann and we are all called in baptism to a faithful response of that salvation, right? That our merciful God looks past who we are in spite of what what we've done to save us. To give us that promise of salvation. To prepare us in a faithful response for good works. It's the same thing that is shared with the newly baptized. When after the baptism we light the candle and we recite the words from Matthew 16, I think it is. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. Marianne not only knew the good news of God's promise of salvation and through through grace, Marianne also lived the faithful response to our baptism and God's grace in good works. What does God's mercy look like for you and for me? Especially as we take time today to remember Marian's life, to celebrate that life, to remember who she was as a faithful disciple of Christ, and now who she is as one of the saints that has gone on before us, leaving behind for you and for me such a faithful model and example of this life. 
We will indeed miss Mary Ann, but we can cling to all of the examples and the experiences that she gave us to live this life well in the faith. She was one that would always be there Monday morning for our Bible study. She was one that would always interject in some way. She didn't talk a lot during Bible study, so when she said something, you knew that it was important on her heart. Marianne was one to carefully listen and study the scriptures that we were talking about. And then she would share what she was feeling. When we were meeting in person before the pandemic, there was a couple of ladies in that Bible study that would always go out to lunch afterwards, and Marianne would always be a part of that group. They would always invite me to go, and boy, what I wouldn't give for another lunch with Mary Ann. I think one of my first interactions with Mary Ann when I came here to Amazing Grace and to Crossroads is when I walked in the building downstairs and someone is frantically preparing for the kids to come down for children's church during Sunday morning worship. And I know she asked me a couple of questions about what I would hope for that time, but I was new here. (laughs) And that was maybe the last thing on my mind in that moment, right? I was worried about getting up here and getting ready for worship. And I knew that whoever they had down there doing children's church would be just fine. And boy, was she great. The children loved her. They still love her. The children learned so much from her, and you could see the joy on her face as she saw the scriptures and the stories of the Bible come to life for these little children of God. It brings us to that text, that gospel lesson from Mark chapter 10. When Jesus is busy, and right before this he's talking about divorce, when relationships are not good, right? When there's strife in a relationship. And in a a quick turn, he turns to, to this section where Jesus is sitting and teaching and preaching, and children start coming up to him. They want to touch him. They want to be with him. A sign in the Gospels of healing, right? When you wanted to be healed in in the Gospels, in in Jesus' life, you went up close to him. You wanted to touch him. That, That brought about healing. So maybe, maybe there was some kind of infirmity that these children had, that they were seeking healing Or maybe they just wanted to be close to the teacher. But nonetheless, the children start coming up and the disciples try to stop them. Because recall, in this time, children had no voice, had no authority. They were really just viewed as yucky, right? They were were little brats that no one needed to give any attention to. So put them off to the side and keep them quiet, right? That's what the disciples said, but Jesus says, no, no, let them come. Let them come to these, are the king, it belongs to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus loves these children, the ones who were viewed in such a horrible way, just as much as everyone, that these children have the same promise of everlasting life as we all do. And so we sing songs like, Jesus loves the little children of the world, because to remember that, to remember that. Not long after I I came back to Amazing Grace and Crossroads, now, for those that don't know, I was here about 10 years ago on internship, and I got to know a lot of you in that time, But then I was gone for about four years, and new people came that I didn't get to know very well because I was gone. And then so when I came back, there were both people that I had known for ten years and new people that I hadn't had a chance to know. Marianne was one of the new people, right, that I hadn't gotten to know because she wasn't here ten years ago when I was here on internship. And not long after we got here, our our, uh, youngest child, Elliot, was born. And about four months after his birth, there was a a birthday party that we were going to that a lot of people from church would be at. And I remember driving to that birthday party with my family, 
and having the conversation with my wife. Now, we're not going to pass Elliot around because he's just too young yet. We don't want a lot of people holding him and him getting sick and all this stuff, right? Pre-pandemic time, we didn't have to worry about all that other stuff, right? We just didn't want him to pass, be passed around a whole lot. So the plan was that my wife was going to hold him so that I could talk and mingle and all that stuff. Well, I remember we, we got there, and not long after we got there, we were seated. And <laughs> here's my short joke. I, I remember seeing this lady come up to me that was about eye level with me, and I was seated, and she was standing. <laughs> she came up to me with boldness and courage, and she said in the sweetest little voice, Pastor, can I hold the baby? And it was Mary Ann. And what was I supposed to say? <laughs> this, this sweet little lady. Pastor, can I hold the baby? I look at Christy and I was like, I'm going to pay for this. Sure, hold the baby. <laughs> oh, hold the baby, Mary Ann. And she stood there and held Elliot with such love and care and grace, talking to him. And he responded. He never got upset. And it was just this joyful moment that we shared. That's the way Mary Ann interacted with what people in Jesus' time viewed as the, less, the least of society. And Mary Ann not only interacted with children that way, but with everyone she came in contact with. There was such a love and a grace about her that, that was just contagious. I saw it in children's church. I saw it in Bible study. I saw it as she volunteered at the mobile food pantry. And people would come up to her and talk to her as she was filling out paperwork. They knew her as a person of great love and acceptance. And one who cared for people. That's the love and the grace and God's mercy that shone through Mary Ann. So in, in Mary Ann's baptism, when that Matthew 16 verse was cited, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. Mary Ann lived that. Mary Ann lived that. God's love and grace and mercy shone through her in every aspect of her life. And so we do well to follow in that example. We do well to follow in that example. Mary Ann, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen.
Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear Amen. our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. Grant us grace to entrust Mary Ann to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. And in just a moment, I'll invite you forward where you can uh, make an offering to the Lord. I want to share a message of thanks for your continued uh, faithfulness and stewardship to support uh, the ministries here and in partnership with Crossroads. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see the God, the God at work in and through us as we push outside of our walls to help those in need and to walk with those in our community who need care. Those of you online, you're, we invite you to join us in supporting the mission and ministry here. You can do that by mailing in your offering to the church office or stopping by and uh, giving your offering in the, in the lockbox that's on the back side of the building or on the side of the building over at Crossroads. Or you can go on to our website, graceatthecross.church, and look for the Donate tab on the homepage where you can give an offering that way. Thank, again, thanks so much for your stewardship in this time. 
And as you're prepared to do so, you can uh, come forward to make an offering today. Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. <clears throat> Come to Christ's banquet. Feast on God's gift of grace. You may be seated. 
For those worshiping online today at this time, I invite you to take the bread, the host, and hear these, God, hear these words of God's love for you. Child of God, this is the body of Christ given for you. And then I invite you to take the cup and hear these words of God's forgiveness. Child of God, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Church, would you please stand? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Mary Ann, We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reminder that we have fellowship downstairs immediately uh, following the dismissal. Uh, Time to um, share your condolences with the family and share stories and uh, love on each other. Let us now go forth in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.